Hey Lani, sorry my mom was such a bitch last night. She hardly ever around since her forest is like an hour away and then when she is home she takes it out on you. Like because you're not a member of the family she knows you won't call her on it and I'm sorry. Haha, <laughs> it's okay. I knew she just she's just jealous of our cool and freewheeling lifestyles. I feel sorry for you. I'm lucky my mom lives in Florida. You have to have a mom every day. Sorry, I didn't mean to bring up the mom thing like that. I know I shouldn't complain. No, I'm being serious. My mom is a psycho Christian and her new husband, Don, is a complete tool. Living in Florida with him is her eternal punishment in my mind. So, you wouldn't rather live with your mom in Florida? Ah, uh, no. <laughs> well, that's one way to put it. National tickets. Earth, wind, and fire. Nice. Let's just put it back where we found it. Ah, <laughs> uh, Sam. This skull was the coolest thing I found in Mexico, and it was like three bucks American. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Merry Xmas. Miss you treasured always. So that's the skull we found in the hallway there. It was kind of cool though. Oh. Mouse sensitivity is not always on my side. She has so many purses. What does one person do with all those purses? Ah, manu manual for forest through research and education. Bing. Boop. Boring. Another one of the postcards. Ooh, cool. Hi mom, dad and Sam. The Vatican is weird. As you can see, the Catholic Church still has a lot of money left o over from the Middle Ages. I've gotten to see all of the art, including the Sistine Chapel ceiling and the sculptures by Michelangelo, Donatello and the rest of the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> mom will have to come back here together. I would love to be here with someone who really appreciates the history behind everything. Also, Sam, they have various relics as in pieces of important dead people, so you should probably come too. Next stop, Barcelona. Calm down, dad. I won't get <laughs> I won't get gored by a bull. Probably. Love, Katie. Oh, another one of those. She put them all over the place there. Sam, since you refused to hear us out this afternoon, your mother and I are putting this in writing so that we are absolutely clear. You are grounded for the rest of the month from social and telephone privileges and from using your car for anything except going to and from school. We understand what you are going through, but we can't allow you to continue with this kind of behavior at school. And clearly, once your privileges are reinstated, we can't allow you to have your bedroom door closed while Lonnie is at the house. This is the last word on the matter. Get back on course so this won't happen again. Walsh. Boo. Distributing inappropriate materials on school grounds. Phone call to students' parents at a school suspension. So basically, yeah. I had an interesting talk with mom and dad tonight. One you were never gonna need to have. I mean, you've known, right? I've known. I've known since, like, she -Ra. Mom and dad didn't, I guess. But they saw the zine and the stuff on the locker, and they were like, Is there something we should know about you and Lonnie? And so here's the thing. I was prepared for them to be mad, or disappointed, or start crying, or something. But they were just in denial. You're too young to know what you want. You and Lonnie are just good friends. You just haven't met the right boy. It's a phase. Oh. That's what I didn't see coming. That they wouldn't even respect me enough to believe me. Well, joke's on them, because they're in for one very long phase. Uh, 
Jeesh. That's just stupid. First off, congratulations. Janice Greenbrier, Regional Director. And I say congratulations because, come on, you're going to take the job, right? What are you waiting for? An engraved, engraved invitation? Call them back. But in the meantime, let's discuss this little outing you had with our favorite flannel-clad hunk. What a blast. But you sound like you're... Ha uh, like you're reading a lot into an innocent night out. You're sure there's something there? You said he has an out of town girlfriend? You're sure they're not serious? Okay. So we have to figure out then. Figure out when we'll see. Wow, this is hard to read. See each other next in person. Enough with the letters. Oh, your congratulation, congratulatory Margarita boss lady. Sue Carol. So that's our oops, friend again, yeah. The accidental warrior. Don't give up on this, honey. Sheesh. He's still trying. I guess the door to that is out here somewhere. Oh! <laughs> guess that's not a good thing to do. Mrs. and Mrs. Jonathan Blair request the honor of your presence in the marriage of the daughter of Helen Margaret to Richard, Richard Morris Peter Mark. Do, 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 do. Yay. Uh, some schedule working at Crown Burger on Bethel Road. Guess there's nothing in here. Ice cream! Yay! Huh, put it back. Um, I wonder if that's the preprint or if that's later. Ratmobile! music in this game really is very punk rocky. I like it. There's nothing in there, there's nothing there. She really cleaned out the place, didn't she? That was just been a mess from the start. I mean, come on. What the hell? Guess there's not a whole lot in here. Well, you never know. Better check. Here we go. Congratulations on your new position. Um. Yeah, she took the job. Read the story. Samantha and Daniel 
were in the woods one day. It was sunny and they were an an ad adventure. The, 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 the bad part of the woods and it got dark. Then I said, are you scared? So Samantha said, no, are you? They laughed and laughed <laughs> and went more into the bad, more into the bad part. Then they went to a part that was ever before. And what else? So Samantha said, "I'll be the captain. And you'll be the first mate." Then they said, "I captain," and they went on the parishes and some scary. Daniel finally came over to get his game. I'd been dreading it. But he brought this story with him that I wrote when we were little. I started reading it. And then there I was, crying at the kitchen table. He asked what was wrong, and I was thinking about how he used to be friends. How much I'd taken for granted. But instead, I told him about school, and Dad, and Lonnie. And then how sorry I was that I wasn't his friend anymore. He gave me a hug and said it was going to be okay. And for some reason, I almost believed him. Aww. It's good you can still be friends. Ah, uh, Unknown Dimension Limited. L limited, is it literature? Um, first, let me say that I hope this missive finds you well. Hell, it feels like a goddamn miracle that it finds you at all. Do you know how long we've been trying to track you down? We're not, we aren't the feds. The men in black or any other of sort of creeping fascist hobgoblins. In fact, we're on your side. Let me start from the beginning. Unknown Dimension is what you might call a specialist publishing, publishing house. We traffic in the weird, the ahead of its time, the lost but not forgotten by a small but dedicated group of plugged in fibula fouls type of out there mass marketing shunning it visionary expression that refuses to be taken on anything but its own terms. Wow, that was awful. We've had an unparalleled r run. Must be a run. Yeah, run since our inceptions four years ago. Unearthing and reviving Christ or zombie like timeless works such as NN Best Man's Message of the Snake Men, It's Inside Me by James Keller and Emma Krieger's off band Venusian Flesh Traders. But ever since we discovered tattered copies of your accidental series at the church rummage sale uh, in Long Branch, New. New. I'm not sure what NG's, NJ stands for, but. We've been trying to track down the author of this weird and dark American outsider art. It's just the kind of forgotten portal in the 20th century civilization anxieties and delusions that our rages lose their minds over. James Bond and Harrison Ford might be the dick swinging heroes that modern suburban American wants, but John Russell, mild mannered insurance agent, but their reckless history of revising sociopath by night is the twisted peacekeeper that it deserves. It is our mission to bring him back to life. Okay, so I've typed plenty. What do we want from you? We want your permission to reprint the work, since you original publisher Mercury Books folded a decade ago. We want you to supply a new foreword for the book to appear in brand new editions of The Accidental Savior and The Accidental Paria to be produced by Unknown Dimensions as a limited run and marketed directly to our highly discerning customer base. And we want to offer you a portion of the proceeds contract to follow, assuming you're interested in coming along with us on this weird odyssey. We look forward to embarking with you and to <laughs> thrusting your work screaming back into the sweating palms of an unsuspecting American public. It's about time. Wow. <laughs> so that's why we've been seeing so much of that. I guess you could say he took the offer. Sam, your mother and I will be away for a long weekend celebrating our anniversary June 3rd to 7th. We've been camping in the gorge, but we will give you a call on the way home. Sorry the kitchen is still mid-renovation. Never th trust a contractor. $40 on the table in order pi you know, uh, to order pizza while we're gone. Be good. 
They're out in this weather. Amazing. Lonnie, my parents are leaving town, so we'll have the run of the whole house till you leave. Imagine actually spending the night in my room instead of sneaking up to our usual spot in the attic. Not that the attic doesn't have its musty allure, but my bedroom is warmer. Sam, we should defile your parents' bed while we're, they're gone. That'll show them. Lonnie, you are so gross. Never change. Clone compass. Oh, jeesh. I don't... I... 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 No. I don't even... I don't want to... Nope. That reference is nope. ROTC. I asked Lonnie what she had to do to get ready to ship out for basic training. She said, not a lot really. You're not allowed to bring anything with you. You have no possessions. No contact with the outside world while you're in basic. You just train hard every day, and then you deploy from there. So, they'll just send her away. To who knows where. The other side of the country. The other side of the world. My mind, like, can't process it. That she's really going to be gone. Just gone. Harsh though. Oh, that's where I came from. Uh, derp. This is where I want to go, I guess. Put it across Scout's last show ever. Aww, Lonnie had her going show. away show with her band tonight. She's so incredible on stage. When she was singing, I could practically forget. Everything. That we only had 48 hours left. That I don't know what comes next. That I can't live without her. Then she dedicated the last song. To me. And I couldn't take it. I was out on the curb in the alley, sobbing till my ribs hurt. I would follow her anywhere, Katie. But I can't. Where she's going. After a long time, she found me. She said she was sorry. She said, I wish things could be different. I just wanted to make you happy. I said, I don't think you can anymore. Feels a bit weird reading this after that thing, but anyway. <laughs> Hi, mom, dad, and Sam. I've had a wonderful time on the beaches of Barcelona. Dad and Sam, I think you would like the Gordia architecture. It's from a strange alien world. <laughs> well, that's true. Gordia is special. I am headed to my final destination, Amsterdam. For how long? That depends. I am running low on. Low? low on money. I will look for a cheap standby ticket and call you when I'm headed home. Sorry for the short notice. Can't wait to see you all again. It'll be good to be home. Ugh. Cooking magazine. Stuff. Mm. Guess there's nothing in there. Yeah, no. Kind of like this place though. It's a nice gr little greenhouse. Ah, from the pen of Terence L. Greenberg. Dear Cass, I can't tell you what a joy it is to see John Russell back in print. 
thank you very much for seeing for sending along copies of the new edition. The cover art is really something. I know you've said that Unknown Dimension isn't in the business of printing new material, but this revived interest in my work has brought on a wave of inspiration, resulting in a manuscript that completes John Russell's journey, which I think you may find intriguing. It is reflective and introspective, without forgetting the excitement and weirdness that Unknown Dimension readers expect. I hope this might be an exciting new direction for Unknown Dimension to pursue. At the very least, I'm grateful that John Russell's adventures didn't come to an end quite when I thought they had. So, he kept on writing, I guess. The accidental human. Oh, of course. Couples counseling retreat. Of course. That's a lot of post-it notes. Cover copy. It's been almost 20 years since John Russell heard the call. Twice he saved a president's life. He's practically forgotten the days of the future and the danger and the excitement. The days where he mattered. So when that familiar rip in time opens in front of him and his handlers peer out, he doesn't hesitate. Is the president in danger? No, the life you saved this time will be your own. Well, why not? That's a jazz mug. That was kind of cute. <laughs> Where will do it? <laughs> and now, June 5th, final preparations are complete. We agreed our last night together would be our happiest ever. And we'd forget tomorrow was going to come at all. It worked for a while. We had a good time seeing Oscar off, then ran up to the attic to look through our photos, to find one for Lonnie to take with her. And looking at them, I realized they were all in the past, and there wouldn't be any more. I didn't know what I was going to do, and I cried, and she held me. She said she knew it was hard, but life would move on. I said I didn't want my life to keep moving without her. That's when she cried too. I was so exhausted. I must have fallen asleep like that, in her arms. In the morning, I woke up, and I was finally alone. Oh, poor thing. I think we've been just about everywhere. Possession <laughs> exorcism. Jeez. <laughs> so they exercised yeah, there's the attic here. The sunset light in this house is the saddest thing I've ever seen. I just want to sleep. When I'm in the attic, it almost feels like Lonnie could still be here. She's just downstairs. I'm just waiting to hear her pull down the hatch and come running up. Maybe I'll go up to the attic and wait. I'm not sure I want to go up there now because if my gut feeling is correct, this is gonna be not good. Oh, no, wait. It's over here, isn't it? Yes, there we go. Maybe not? Aww, it's tear stained. Oh my god. Katie, I, I 
fell asleep in the attic, in Lonnie and my old spot, and I missed the first two calls. I just barely caught the third one before the machine got it. And it was Lonnie, on a payphone. She'd been on the bus to Basic, and she said she couldn't... She couldn't think of anything but me, and us, and that she couldn't go through with it, with the army and being a part, and all of it. And so she got off the bus in Salem. She said, Sam, I want you to pack up everything you can and get in your car and come find me. And let's just drive until we find somewhere for us. And she asked me if I could do that. And I said, yes. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. Ah, that's perfect. Oh, ah, oh, just look at that. That's so pretty. Amazing. Letters to Katie. Katie, I'm so sorry that I can't be there to see you in person, that I can't tell you all this myself. But I hope as you read this journal and you think back, that you'll understand why I had to do what I did and that you won't be sad. And you won't hate me. And you'll just know that I am where I need to be. I love you so much, Katie. I'll see you again someday. Love, Sam. Ah, oh, that's so perfect, though. I really enjoyed this game. That was so amazing. I really liked how the story sort of fold it out how or how you want to say it ah uh, so satisfactory um i was uh, getting a bit apprehensive when um the whole thing about the oh it's just a face you'll get through it, and all that kind of thing came up uh because me personally i think that's just bullshit because if you do feel something you do feel something it's just not taken out of nowhere uh, and it's not really right to ignore that it's just it's just stupid and say trying to say that oh it's not permanent you won't be feeling like this forever of course you won't be feeling like that forever but feelings change they always do but that said it's just stupid to say that oh you're not gonna like girls forever Durr. well it's it's not like you choose who you like. It just has. It just happens. I mean, come on. It's just silly trying to say otherwise. Um, and the whole thing about the faces is just silly. And seeing this, though, it reminded me that things seems to be quite different between how things are done in the Nordic countries. And even difference between the Nordic countries in themselves, but from the Nordic countries and the rest of the world. Because to me at least, having grown up in the Nordic countries, it seems that it's not necessarily more accepted to be gay or homosexual, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it might not be more necessarily more accepted, but it is accepted in a different way, I think. Because it's not so much that, oh, this goes against God, etc, etc. It's more like, 
this makes me uncomfortable sort of thing. It's more that kind of difference. Whereas in other places in the world, it seems that being homosexual is like, oh, this goes against my religion and this is foul and sinful and whatever. And to me personally, I'm not necessarily religious per se. It's just, so to me, it's silly to say that, oh, this goes against my religion because some guy a thousand years ago said this particular thing. Because values change, they always do. And while there are many good things in religion, this slandering and, oh, this is sinful, ooh, we shouldn't be doing this kind of thing is just stupid. Uh, because I'll put it down to common sense. And common sense says that as long as it doesn't harm anyone, go for it. I mean, come on, it's that simple to me at least. And it might not be for others, but that's just for me. And it's interesting to see these kind of differences. And I guess that I'm I'm lucky, where considering how I've grown up and the family that surrounds me, um, I don't really have much connection to one part of my family. But my mom is really amazing, and I love her so much. And she is really chilled out about anything like that because I don't think she would even raise an eyebrow if I brought home a girl uh, so she wouldn't really care I don't think either of my brothers would, e would either uh, and the rest of the family I don't really care for so I don't really mind either way <laughs> and the family that I've chosen they wouldn't mind at all because I've chosen these people because I know they're cool so, yeah, it wouldn't really matter for me. And I feel that I'm very lucky in that regard. And I feel for people that don't have the luxury of feeling that lucky. But then again, I guess I could see how society's pressure would come in. Because even if my family wouldn't necessarily disagree to me bringing home a girl or being with a girl or whatever... I can just imagine trying to introduce my my potential or hypothetical uh, girlfriend to the community where I grew up because it's a small town. It's a really small town, and everyone knows everyone. And everyone's favorite pastime is gossiping, uh, gossiping about the person next door. So would spread like wildfire and would possibly not be that well uh, regarded but as I said I don't really care about that but I can see the potential danger in it which is very sad people should just leave each other be and just get on with their own lives really that's what I've taken out of my childhood anyway anyhow I've rambled quite enough for this uh, so to get down to it, I really enjoyed this game and I hope you enjoyed my uh, playthrough of it. Uh, so as always, thank you very much for watching and tune in to the next one.